It's Thursday the 24th of August and time for a very special Oroville update with unprecedented access to the Oroville construction site inside the spillway today. My name's Juan Brown and you're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. So let's go take a look at one of the single biggest monumental engineering projects going on in America right now today. In parts one and two, we checked out the structural concrete plant, the emergency spillway and secant cutoff vault. Now it's time to get down into the spillway itself. We're gonna start part three in this section of spillway in the upper part as shown here by the yellow dot. Now this section of spillway, just like the lowermost section of spillway, has already been completely demolished and is getting replaced with structural concrete on top of leveling concrete and bolted all the way down to bedrock. And they were already beginning to build the 30 foot tall structural concrete training walls, the side walls to the spillway. Construction supervisor from DWR, Tom Cabarubia, is gonna to explain to us how the drains work in this section of spillway. Now remember the perforated drain pipes were placed inside these stay in place forms as a along with gravel like a French drain in between the sections of leveling concrete and now Tom's going to explain how the water gets out of these drain pipes. So that's your under drain collecting any water that may be underneath the, uh, the spillway itself and then it goes back into the spill. It comes, it flows out, goes down at level elevation, it dumps back into the spillway. Back into the top of the spillway. So we can monitor and see it. Because if it just dumps out here somewhere, this is going to be back. You, can't tell you wouldn't be able to see what's going on. Yeah, you can't tell if there's any water in any specific location. So it, let's say if we hit, you have these under drains at every uh, pipe section, uh -huh. right? And every exit section that goes into the spillway you can identify where that drain's coming from. So if you have one that's got a lot of water coming out, you can kind of identify what construction joint that that water may be coming from. Now does that, and then you have clean outs, you can run a camera down mm -hmm. and see if there's anything that compromises uh -huh. uh, underneath the spillway that would cause that water to come out. And then it's released to a lower elevation before it's dropped back Yeah, out. then okay. it's gravity fed outside the elevation so we get a clean out that runs uh, downstream at a uh, whatever slope, you know, quarter inch minimum, yeah. uh, until we get to a point and they're at a specific design height coming into the spillway. Mm -hmm. So they're all consistent in terms of this back here. Okay. All of this up here is good. So the drain pipe system becomes a bit of a troubleshooting system in the future and is a much better system than the original design. Now it's time to check out the massive 30 foot tall structural training walls that give the Oroville Spillway its more than enough design capacity of 270,000 CFS. Remember, this is not to be confused with the operational limit of 160,000 CFS. We'll also check out the structural slabs on the bottom of the spillway and the critical waterproof expansion joint detail. That's correct. This Everything is all structural. On the slab invert or the floor of the slab gets called uh, erosion resistant concrete and uh, and this which is structural also and then this here is structural as well but it's not erosion resistant you guys want to see some plywood yeah <laughs> look at this plywood look at this so here's the forms for the uh, structural walls you can see the taper you got the I-beams on the outside supporting the forms, it's going to support the weight of all this concrete which is going to be poured all the way up to the top in one single pour, starting what, tomorrow? Hopefully tomorrow. tomorrow. Wow. And look at this doweling. So this doweling ties each one of your structural concrete slabs. Yep. So this is your concrete slab here. This is finished. Yep. Okay, and then they'll tie this one and these keep them both at the same elevation and then they'll caulk they'll put like a piece of back rod and then caulk in between these so it's going to be your expansion joint right there that's correct all right and uh, they will leak somewhat i suppose but no we got rubber seals this is good rubber so it should here. be a waterproof seal so it's a it's like a bulb with a yeah. piece of uh, 
rubber in between both of the slabs mm -hmm. so it creates a positive seal. Great. So if any water real, really infiltrates, it would, only, it would be stopped here. It okay. should not go in the Okay. So you So this portion here had the original slab on it. Right, that was the, you were going to keep it, weren't you? Uh, well, it wasn't scheduled to be done this, this year. year. I think yeah, they were yeah. do it next year. So um, this is what it looks like after the slab is removed. Um, wow. As you can see, there's yeah. a lot. Of, there's a lot of loose dirt, gravel, and such that the original spillway was built on. Yeah. Um, the new. If you look on new. Um, Everything, if there's pits below seven and a half feet, is filled with e either a dental or, or the RCC concrete. And then from seven and a half feet below the finish up to, um, to two and a half feet below the finish, it's called a leveling concrete. And then above that, like a foundation. Mm -hmm. It's like a, but it's made out of concrete. And then you have your finished slab on top. So there's no, there's no loose dirt or sediment or anything. As a compact backfill underneath right. it that could possibly like the ever, original design like it ever apparently had yeah. to it. Is this what they call the technically the area of unauthorized blasting? And so they decided to just go ahead and do this this year. No, that was I don't know what yeah. the unauthorized blasting right. was. It, it was unauthorized because um, we were planning on doing it um, this year, but we didn't have authorization from the Division of Safety of Dams and FERC. That was yeah. that was kind of the unauthorized, That's the unauthorized part. part. All right. So. FERC and DSOD later did authorize this blast and they just they hadn't reviewed it yet. We were asking them to review all of our construction plans simultaneously. They just didn't have time to get to all of these things. Kiewit was uh, was was trucking with their blasting and yep. so uh, this area was blasted. So um, anyway, this area needed to get done. It yep. was, we were planning on doing it. We had actually already asked to do this whole section, but we were waiting for that uh, that that sort of that, that verification from our from our regulators. So uh, so we all kind of we all stood down on the blasting for a couple of days. Everybody got on the same page. FERC and DSOD got a chance to kind of review the plans and, and approve them and agree to continue working on this section. So let's go up to this section here. You can look at some of the pre-slab work that's being done. Okay. And what's that big channel on the top of the wall for? Those there? are it's basically for safety. Oh. So okay. as you can see, everybody's tied off. They got yo-yos up there that oh, okay. they are tied. So once they get up on top, they want to be able to place the concrete without worrying about it. Getting everybody on board with the blasting schedule is important so you don't blast more spillway than you can possibly rebuild in this one short building season. And that's after. So you can almost eat off of this rock. Wow. So all your rock is, everything is cleaned down to bare rock, all little granules, sand, everything is smooth, water. But a lot of it's hand work, and then they come back and water blast it after it's done. Now, does this grid line here represent the same grid line we saw your picture in the office? Yeah, they're no. uh, inspection grid lines, yeah. so we can get a better idea on the, when we go to map it out. It's, it's, What's been, what's been approved for different, different types of work activities? Yeah. Like archaeology? Yep. Yeah, geology is heavily involved in identifying the rock, any uh, fissures or anything that may compromise the uh, spillway. And then they also do the inspection uh, prior to. So, one more time on leveling versus RCC. This is cleaned out. It's going to start with leveling concrete. Up to what point do you quit calling it leveling concrete? Well, we actually start with the RCC if it's a deep hole. Like when we get down oh, to the okay. big punch really? hole, uh -huh. we'll have like 100 foot of RCC built up to seven and a half feet below the slab level. And then from seven and a half feet to five feet below the slab level is your leveling concrete. Or a foundation. That's why I like to Okay. To right. Okay. The and then you have two and a half feet of your erosion your resistant concrete, concrete, which is your, uh, your slab. And rebar, right? Yeah. Correct. So you got a section of leveling concrete directly underneath the structural concrete, right. and below that may vary with the well. But you just either RCC. have you either have rock, solid rock, or you have RCC. Oh, Everything okay. goes to solid rock. Got it. Got it. Got it. As a point of clarification, when Tom is talking about RCC underneath structural concrete, I believe he's referring to this section 
of spillway, the section that's going to get filled with RCC, and then get structural concrete next year. There are little fissures and cracks that we also have to put in dental concrete. Dental concrete. And so the dental concrete is typically just a real, almost no aggregates that are in it. It's more of almost like a slush grout, if you will. Slush grout. Yeah. Um, we also use a self-consolidating concrete, which is a high flow concrete that will disperse the fill. So those are the little tiny fissures that we can't pack RCC into good. You know, so. What are these walls, what are they intended for? So underneath your slabs, and we saw, I explained about the pipes, your under drains, mm -hmm. which are slotted, perforated yeah. pipes that collect water. Well, these are stay forms that stay in the slab itself. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they create a channel to put your under drains in uh, while they're putting the uh, leveling concrete. So it just, so once this is all, it builds a slot and your, your perforated pipe, your under drains need to be bedded in sand. So you can imagine how impossible that would be try to get that all formed up and to pour your leveling concrete next to it. So they put in these forms, they pour everything up, it creates a slot, and then they're able to put the pipe in there, gravel it incorrectly, get it to grade, bring it to level, and then they uh, put fabric over on top, and then they start to uh, You can't tell from here that they're level level. They're, yeah, it's level all the way from the top is level. But I mean, uh, it's not one single right. yeah. wire with a Right. And you'll see that more so when we go down. So fill in the middle and then once that's filled in, you take those things out and no, place they, they, nope. they stay. They stay. They stay. Now the difference that next year when we go to do the RCC, we go to do um, the slab on the RCC, which is already up to about where the dental is, you'll actually saw cut all these trenches out here because that'll be solid. Right, right, right. Instead of demoing all out. So next year when they get to work on that RCC section, are they going to cut it down just deep enough to do a structural form concrete or they got to dig it down? They're well, not going to bother with leveling concrete again, are they? They may not have to. They may not have to. Yeah. They may not have, it all depends on if we... Well, I don't we'll know, know, I, I don't know what the season's going to do yeah. to the RCC. Yeah, yeah. You know, and depending on the erosion, how much repair will have to be done to the subgrade before... That, we'll leave that up to the engineers. To yeah, we're, we're hoping we don't have to use the slab or to use the, the, the entire spillway this year. But right. if we do, we definitely want to go down and inspect and see if there's any change to the RCC or to the structural. Yeah, yeah, and that'll we'll, be we'll done constantly. If, right. if, if there are releases, uh -huh. I can almost get, I, I can foresee that they will be doing inspections after each release. Yeah. We're talking to Matt about uh, RCC, the basic. Um, Strength of RCC is what 90 days to 2500 psi? Yeah, yep. And uh, then the question is well, how do you get the top layer of RCC hard enough to withstand the water pressure that it may experience this year? They're going to chemically harden it, they're still working out the numbers, and then alter the mix of the last 12 inches of that RCC to. Get it up to what about 8,000 psi, possibly six yeah, to 8,000. Tr trying to get it stronger, and they're talking about maybe a hardener on the surface. So those are all being investigated, and we're trying to, you know, make sure everybody's in agreement on, on what and how we're going to make that RCC finish. It's it's a by all means kind of a living process right now to make sure that everybody's on board to get the. And again, that's just for the uh, for this one year, and then next year will come in with a structural concrete. Coming up next is very special guest Jeff Peterson of Kiwit Engineering the project director for the entire Orville project. Jeff is gonna show us the lower spillway and the all important race to complete the upper plunge pool in the RCC section of the middles of the spillway. This area you're looking at is um, Scour Hole 1 or Hell's Canyon 1 as it got nicknamed on the job. So it's totally full. Hell's the Scour Hole 1 is full and we're going up beyond it and headed for Scour Hole 2. So the leveling concrete doesn't go where RCC is. Leveling concrete only goes uh, where um, the RCC isn't. So it's the foundation for the rock. So I think there was confusion yesterday that Jenny said there's leveling going in the lower chute still. Um, there is. There's just a little bit of leveling to place down in this what we call the lower chute. But Scour Hole 1 is completely full. RCC. Right. And so we're looking at a RCC finish here. Yes. 
The only thing he's got on that is the one foot hardening layer. Enriched RCC yeah. layer. Right. You hear in the background the drill, he's putting in the anchor bolt. Okay. to the walls so where you see the lumber bracing and handrails that gets removed next week you'll see scaffolding in place for access for the shot creek subcontractor and they'll start their work after labor day and they'll put a six inch smooth a lot like a pool a swimming pool finish and they'll uh, steel trowel finish with real tight tolerance and so that's what the water will flow through and when they come in next year and want to put structural walls in here they're going to cut these rcc walls back enough to do that yeah, they're actually, the plan right now is to remove them entirely. Okay, and just do a whole new, wow. <laughs> well, you have to get your drains in. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Because the drainage system yeah. goes behind the you wall. You mess so all that up. It's yeah. hard to coordinate. All right. This bottom portion is getting structural concrete? Yes, it is. So mm -hmm. the, spent, it's a little hard to see from this vantage point, but any concrete covered in plastic, well, this one just got removed. But this first slab is finished. So this is that point where the lower spillway makes the transition from stru a structural concrete finish and sidewalls to a roller compacted concrete finish. And the big 12 foot wide RCC training walls, which will be replaced next year with structural concrete training walls to match the rest of the spillway. They simply just don't have the time to install structural concrete training walls along the entire spillway this year. Jeff explained some more about the anchor bolts down here. The anchor bolts with the cone on top are finished. The anchor bolts get drilled, drilled into bedrock, and water tested with a five gallon bucket of water. Make sure there's, they haven't drilled into any cracks, make sure it holds that water. They remove the water get the anchor bolt in there and that that hose that you see sticking out of the anchor bolt that's the grout that's how they grout the anchor bolt into its position then the 30% uh, of the anchor bolts are pull tested and that's how you anchor the slabs or that's how you're going to anchor the slabs the structural slabs to the leveling concrete to the bedrock down below each of those anchor bolts is about 25 feet long and it's embedded 10 to 15 feet in the bedrock. Anchor bolts, big anchor bolts or rock bolts. And the hose that you see is to inject the grout. So we'll have to save the best for last in part four of the final portion of our Orville Spillway construction tour where Jeff Peterson of Keywood Engineering explains how the race to fill the lower plunge pool matches the RCC coming up from the lower spillway. Spoiler alert, here's some photographs taken from the Mighty Luscombe on the 30th of August showing how well that race is going already. And the area where we were standing in the upper spillway is already over halfway filled with leveling concrete. Now it's taken me over a week to get these videos together of our construction tour. I really thank you for your patience and your continuing support and subscription to this station. So stay tuned, I'll get part four out to you shortly and I'm gonna to continue to follow this Oroville story all the way to its logical conclusion which will be another year and a half's worth of construction work and we're gonna of course monitor the performance of the RCC roller compacted concrete that everybody's so interested in throughout this winter's flood season, if they have to use the spillway even at all.